so wonderful. I just want to thank everybody for being here. I, I'm so glad I watched this with, with all of you instead of on my couch on Netflix and at, at one in the morning or something. You know, felt like a, such a communal experience. Yeah, it's like, it's for anyone who doesn't know anything about senior, but if you love yeah. cinema, there are yeah. so many layers of life. It's great to be here. Cinema and art and more life. And that was what senior was. I mean, that's, you can't fake that. You know, and he had that till the very end. I'm just so glad you had this experience. I remember talking to you, it feels like years ago, but when is it you say, yeah, I'm kind of doing this thing on Robert Downey's senior, you know, I'm, I'm shooting, I'm like, wow, that sounds fascinating, you know? I mean, I'm a fan of his from way back before I knew the name Robert Downey Jr. You know, if you're watching films at a certain era, you know, all, all those films. And uh, yeah, I, I just, everything you were saying about it sounded so fascinating. So anyway, well, congratulations on how Thank you. And wonderful I do remember it turned out. I, I don't, I didn't I, know where it was going, you know, I didn't have much info, of course, but it's just, I can't imagine, I don't know, we'll talk about, talk about the origins. The origin is actually, th thanks for asking, because I'm yeah. really emotionally rocked right now, and so that's easy to focus on something non-emotional, like the right. beginning of the project. Um, my wife, Emily Ford, produces docs for Team Downey, and part of her job is to meet filmmakers and look for different things for the Downeys to get involved with. And so as part of a general meeting, she met the filmmaker Chris Smith, and he had made another film called Jim and Andy, which was a film about Jim Carrey and, you know, kind of a... Yeah, which if you haven't seen that, you got to... We'll see every Christmas film, but... Anyway. Really cool, and it was yeah. archival-based, yeah. and, and she just said, well, you know it came up that if he ever had a chance, he would love to maybe do something like that with Robert one day. Separately, I had been immersed with, with Robert Downey doing a bunch, of, Junior, doing a behind the scenes footage and all kinds of different shoots and projects mm -hmm. over a period of years. So she said, well, why don't I pair you with Kevin who's been shooting with Robert, have all this pool of footage and maybe we can create you know something together. So we were just all jazzed up, Chris was in, and Emily and I went one day to the office and pitched it to Robert. And he said, no way, not gonna do it. Not interested to make a film about myself. And you know, in that moment we were like, how did we just miss, we just crapped you know, everything, we shot the bed here. Right. Yeah. And, uh, but he said, if you wanna do my father, I'm in. And so we were like quickly, obviously excited, went back to Chris Smith, he said, oh yeah, let's do it. And so probably a week or two after that, maybe three weeks, um, Chris, Emily, myself went out and just started filming with Senior. And at that time, uh, you know, with documentary, you're just kind of feeling it out and saying, can we get something in the can? And, and, I, and I remember Chris and I were very confused because early on, Downey Senior kept saying, I want to show you these films of mine so that we can cut them in. And he had his own idea for a film right off the bat. Yeah, that, can I just interrupt? I just love that aspect that he, filmmaker, commandeers, whatever you guys are doing, to make his own film. Yeah. <laughs> to kind of steal a film within a film. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's such a great impulse. And to think that I guess that's his last film, it has to be. Absolutely, and, and that's something, I think, it, I think it's pretty clear in this, but there's definitely a final Downey Senior version of the film. It's one hour and 50 minutes, and it was very meaningful to me. I was there the moment when he called it, yeah. and it's, it's very different. I like to think of it as a, a flip side to this film because it was a collage of his whole entire life. So you see us in the movie editing, what we were doing was going through every single film he had ever made pulling moments that interested him and then weaving it together in a collage, but then he also wanted outtakes of our documentary. Okay. So for example, I said, Senior, we've got a great interview with Alan Arkin. He says, wonderful things, you've gotta watch it. And he said, I love Alan, he's a great guy, but I, I don't really wanna hear anything he has to say about me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. However, I, I got him to watch it and in the end he goes, there's one scene I like. It's the moment when he walks out of the interview and starts eating kumquats. Put it in. <laughs> and so in Senior's Cut, yeah, something that has he no utilized, business in this film. So yeah. it's the perfect <laughs> counterpoint. Um, and at some point, we do hope, you know, people in, in the right way can experience his yeah, film. Yeah, this is a double feature. Yeah. So 
is that film finished or what's does it have a title it, it, it actually we never we, you know, we were so busy making it we never actually had a title so we just call it the senior cut and okay maybe that's the title but um it's interesting because his is so abstract and such a collage of his own personal cinema that I even yeah. used old movie credits and titles from his films to be the titles and like end credits on his cut. Um, in terms of is it finished, that's a, a really interesting question because we didn't sound mix it, we didn't color correct it, color time it or any of that. But, but with Senior, we locked that cut. Now when I left, I didn't think that was the last time I was ever gonna see him. Mm -hmm. That's just the way it worked out. So right now that cut, I've protected it and it's right. there. But he locked picture. He felt good about 100%. it. 100%. percent and matter so of fact, the last night we ever worked on it, he said, it's got to be lean and mean. And we cut right. 12 minutes out, Whoa, okay. got it down to a reasonable 150. So it's his eyes wide shut. Yeah. It's his. <laughs> Absolutely. And one thing I, that I like to reflect on about it is that to his very last moments, he got to live and breathe cinema. That was what this man cared about. It, it was what oh, drove him. And, and I liked, I can actually speak more freely because Junior's not here, but I just love the fact that as his son, knowing his dad, the one gift he could give him in those final years of his life was to immerse him in another movie. Yeah. I mean, that's it. That was everything to Senior, as his wife said. I mean, it kept him alive. There was a lot of cognitive therapy also happening mm -hmm. with him making the film within the film and probably even some of us pushing him to be on camera. Yeah. You know, that push and pull was nice for him, I think. Well, yeah, you just see he's still excited about life. He's, he's got something yeah. he's living for. He's witty as always and has that little extra energy in him even when he's... You know, that's just great, you know, for an artist. You know, it's really rare. Filmmakers, you kind of get put out to pasture if you're dependent on others' money. You know, it's a real gift. You know, I see this as like, okay, that's the way to <laughs> that's the way to go out if you're so lucky to be making a film lock picture on your deathbed. That sounds pretty perfect. I, I'll sign I know. up for that right now. <laughs> and it was a very existential thing for me, you know. Yeah. Basically, I'm half his age. Um, right. Actually, a little bit older, but basically half his age and I would be sitting there thinking my god like the time goes by so quick I could be 80 84 he was 84 when he passed mm -hmm. and just thinking about that all the projects um, that I've ever shot and just kind of seeing yeah. uh, this mashup of your life and what I what I thought was so cool was how much he loved what he had done it, yeah. it wasn't like he was looking back with regrets he was so amused with all of those things, the monkey. Yeah. <laughs> in the, well, it seems like he was pretty amused when he was making it. Exactly. You know, yeah. He was pretty happy with so whatever he all did. these happy accidents and things he was kind of conjuring up. He seems like a great orchestrator of yeah. kind of an inspired, chaotic craziness, you know. And, you know, you've devoted your life to film. Uh, so many people that just love it get that. And then I think even if you don't, whatever your thing is, that you've devoted your life to, yeah. to be able to enjoy it and to love something that much to the end, that's something that I learned from Senior. And I've missed him a lot since he's been gone, a lot. Mm -hmm. And I told you, I've been working on some other projects now just to try to keep that momentum going. There's a, yeah. there's a thing I've been working on and sometimes I like to just get lost in it and I close my eyes and just kind of imagine he's right over there egging me on because that was something I got to experience and he was um, the ultimate improv artist in that sense. He would say, let's try it. Yeah. So I, I find like that it. if I'm having yeah. creative blocks, I kind of just feel senior right over there. Yeah, saying, just kind of feeling it like, oh, I like yeah. that. So, yeah, I was so moved too um, by, by Robert, you know, junior, you know, just like, wow, because he grew up, you were saying love of cinema, that just kind of like for me and you, you know, you find it and it becomes your thing, but he was just so born into it. It's an interesting portrait of someone born into, not the industry at all, but yeah. the art form. Yeah. You know, the life of an editing room or what it is to be, you know, working on films or actors, or it's, it's so exciting, but it seems pretty precarious, you know? I see Robert as a real triumph of, of I mean, I, I, two survivors in, in mm -hmm. different ways, you know, different, time scales, but wow, it, it, 
I'm just so happy for both of them <laughs> that yeah. they had this experience that they both got through their, you know, at, in their own time, you know, their problems. And I don't know, it's pretty triumphant in a way, you know, it's like art kind of triumphs or the yeah. spirit of that triumphs over all their worldly addictions and problems and all that. So I just, I have more admiration for Robert than ever, which is yeah. saying a lot because I, I regard him, you know, so highly, but wow you know he could have been a very different scenario you know yeah. i'm just he's just a pure artist you know and mm -hmm. it's interesting to hear them say oh well, he was that the first day he showed up it's right. like yeah that's that's robert but there's a lot of other kids like they would be better like look what atmosphere i grew up in of course i was doomed i was a drug addict you know it's like that he all that but it he has a great second act you know i don't know i just found myself very moved by his life in relation to his dad's and, and that they're so close and I don't know. Yeah. And, Wonderful. and we, you know, we've worked with him for years. Um, and yet I found myself coming away with a whole new appreciation for him. So it was like, you kind of know someone, but then I didn't know him that way. And, and this, for all of us involved, like I said before, it was myself, my wife, Emily, Susan, Robert, Chris. Now, obviously you get to post-production, you have a whole army, but that, right. those five people, all of us were so moved. It changed our life watching the fearlessness with which he faced what was going on with his dad and then even the layer of them talking about how his dad was with his second wife as she passed with ALS. Yeah, wow. So you can't come away from something like this and then look at your own life and not be moved. And, and in my case, um, it's definitely changed my life. And, and I've credited Robert a lot just for showing that vulnerability because for many years he had gone and off and he'd become Iron Man and he had done all these things. And I think more than ever, he was, he was kind of the man behind this, this big mask. And this film felt like he just dropped the mask and it really showed us who he was. And I mean, seeing a man cry and being in the room when he's facing that stuff, that was tough. Um, as a friend, even filming, you're like, am I, should I even be filming this? Like, there was times where I kind of felt like maybe I should just not film. But he and his dad both made it pretty clear that they wanted to face it together. So, I mean, it's, I think it's very special. And I've gotten to work on a lot of things for a lot of years. But, um, you know, with this, just if I put, because I had, you know, several different roles, but if I just put that editor hat on, for that, I was always thinking Maisel's Brothers meets Hal Ashby. Oh, yeah. You know, so there's kind of a, a, a movie and, and a mortality kind of thing with the Hal Ashby, but then that raw verite, you don't really know, and you're just going with it like the Maisel's. Yeah, well, talk about your working relation with uh, Chris Smith, you know, like he's a fascinating filmmaker and just kind of just a brilliant documentarian. And I've seen, I think, almost everything he's done over the years. But I, I, what were, did you feel like you were on the same page? Like when you started, what was what was he thinking? What were you thinking? Did he know seniors' movies? You know what? What was his? What was he? You know, what did he think he was getting into? Yeah, I think he, what's interesting is, and I wish he was able here to answer that. So I don't want to misspeak, but I will say I know that he had gone through some things where his his dad had major health challenges. So there was a something especially as that became a part of the story that I think was touching to him. Um, but interestingly enough, Chris wasn't so familiar with seniors films and he was very honest about that, you know, from the beginning. So for him, it was about sometimes doing documentaries, you can learn about something that you know yeah. nothing about. Yeah. And That's so like that making was making a film about something to, yeah. to get to know something. So, so that was pretty cool for him. And that's probably pretty representative. Sorry to interrupt, but there's the generations who, you know, like I always go Robert Downey. Like I always think of the filmmaker and yeah. Junior starts showing up in the 80s. See films like Less Than Zero. I was like, oh, Robert Downey Jr. Who's, you know, he, oh, so he, he's his kid, you know, I, it was, I was always senior oriented just because I knew those films. And it was, it was just fascinating to see Robert in Hollywood of all places. Cause I thought, oh, you couldn't be out of the mainstream more, but then here the kid is, yeah. I'm seeing him in, you know, less than zero studio type films. But, you know, from the beginning, you never forget when you first see Robert Downey Jr. But 
I didn't know. When did Senior get the name Senior is what I want to know. Because there was Robert Downey and there was Robert Downey Jr. Right. When did he start being called Senior? That, you know what? It, 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 it took Robert's. I think that yeah, is probably what it is. Is like probably as Robert began to rise, then there's yeah. like, oh, it's, it, now it's senior. But yeah, because you know, like, there's a Frank Sinatra Jr. out there, but there was a, you never called him Frank Sinatra Senior. Right. You know, uh, like, if you're really I, I, famous, it, you probably shouldn't name your kid after you know exactly Joe DiMaggio Jr. Just you, it, you don't have a chance. Also, the fact that Robert Downey himself that wasn't even his real name, then it gets right. really confusing. Yeah. It was Robert Elias, so then now Junior is just kind of this like yeah. offshoot of an of a invention. <laughs> so that, I mean, there's just so That's many when you things know to they're unpack. Born to be like artists, you know, kind of yeah. making up stuff. But back, you know, back to touch on that thing with Chris. We we jumped in it together, and we have very different styles. He is very composed. A lot of times, lock off shots, and he'll you know do a lot. And there was a point early on where, and, and I'm a little bit the opposite, and you, you've seen that in some of the things I've gotten to, to do over the years. You know, I'll chase things and kind of, you could turn around and now I'm hiding behind a bush filming or I'm over behind a couch, like shooting right, through a pillow. Yeah. Um, so Chris, I think one day we went and got coffee early on and he goes, I don't understand what you're doing. I turn around and you're over here and then you're over there. And he's like, I lock off the shot and I do like really composed things. And I just kind of was stunned. I said, well, gosh, I guess, you know, when you collaborate and jump in and we shot it together, I, I didn't know what to do. So I just queued up some footage on the camera and played it back. And he said, oh, my God, this is really beautiful. Wait, that's what you're doing? OK. And, and after that, I think he felt at ease. But if you don't know my process, it could look a little bit crazy. And I think there was a little bit of a thing of like senior kind of latched on to that, you know, and he felt comfortable with you know, me kind of popping around and, and junior, I felt kind of was like, no, like Chris Smith is framing this in a certain way. Maybe a little more control, a little more chaos, you know, yeah, I mean, a little they, more they, improv, a little more. And they joke yeah. about, it. they call it, his dad said the two camps and, and Robert has said, it's like, well, my dad kind of took Kevin and, and I was all too happy to go over to, to the senior camp, but at the same time, keep my foot in the junior camp. <laughs> yeah, I guess. I kind of wanted the best That's of both. That's funny, a movie that has two camps, two movies. Yeah. It's really fascinating. And five people involved. You know, it's not like big factions. It's really... And, and I, I mentioned that to you before, but it, it is really interesting to me. And, and it, I mean, obviously, this is a film-loving crowd here, but movies can get so bloated and there can be so much with crew and, and PAs and trucks and, and stuff. And we just had none of that. And I also think for everybody involved, this was such a fun, direct cinema experience. For Robert, he got his hands dirty. For Susan, yeah. they got their hands dirty. And, and a lot of times, I think people just need to, um, you know, get that kind of taste again. And, and this movie gave us all that, that thing of just being in a room and figuring it out together without tons of other people involved. What a contrast to the world he's occupied in the Marvel <laughs> Universe. Exactly. The size of the films and the shape yeah. of that and what that must be like compared to a few people making a film which is kind of closer to his family lineage spirit, you know, so it must have been kind of wonderfully refreshing or exactly you know, something I, I, so personal. Yeah, you know? I felt or sensed that was for Robert maybe a little bit of a kind of a full circle to like yeah, even like having his own son in the film and, and yeah. reminding him of how it was. So, yeah, for everyone, it was kind of a, a healing and regenerative experience. I that moment where grandson says to father the line, the first line he said. It's <laughs> That's, yeah. This, this film, there's just so much humor in it. It's just so, so funny, so absurd, too. You know, so. And, and uh, you know, it, in that moment, which was a pretty heavy visit, and suddenly you realize, Within you know, the heaviness senior is still just improving. You know, he that was funny. You know, he he refused to do the line as it was in pound, and right. junior finally just gave up. So yeah. senior kept having to twist it. You know, but that was his humor. Like he he he's making his films in the '60s. It's a heavy time. There's wars. There's a lot of strife yeah. in the world, and he's making these just oddball, funny, but. They're serious, but there's kind of, but they're, I don't know. That was just his tone. Yeah. Con continuously, you know, just the whole, the whole way. So to the end, so. 
So, well, I'm kind of dominating the mic here. If anybody has some questions, we will we will take a few. I see a hand up over there. Interesting question, if you can't all hear it. So, yeah, was it always conceived as a black and white movie? Or what, what do you think? Not at all. We, we jumped in and we started filming it in color. As a matter of fact, the earliest kind of sample of the project, like when we first cut it together, was in color. But after spending some time with Senior and watching, we kept watching more and more of his films with him. He would have us sit in the room. Um, one day, I, because again, putting the editor hat on, um, just started looking at it in black and white. And I took it to Chris and Emily and and the rest of our team. And they, they all, everybody said, wow, this this feels more like Senior. This So in a sense, yes. it was a way to connect to Senior and say, look, we, we're trying to meet you halfway and kind of do something. And it just suddenly felt like we were entering into, yes, it's a, a documentary, yeah. but we're entering into like a shared kind of cinema space where we're meeting his style halfway. Yeah, it looks like so many, you know, Chafed Out was, and, yeah. you know, those, a lot of his 60s, and his home movies. You know, yeah. I think they were, a lot of that was black and white but it's so great like on greasers and stuff when it jumps into color right the yeah. rittenhouse square it's like oh yeah so i like the way it's true to his color work yeah black and white work in the film I don't know. and and by the way is it early on we we decided that we wanted to do that well then we came and brought it to senior and he he immediately said that's it let's let's do black and white so you know he it was like a well, let's see what he thinks and he was way into it and from then on we just never questioned it and then you start making choices visually, knowing it's black and white. So at that point, we, you know, probably pretty early on, we just committed to it. So. I think it looks great. So other questions? There would obviously be a point where you go from there's a possibility that Senior is going to die to the fact you're in a room with somebody who is in the process of, of dying. And I was wondering what the conversations were with the family. Everybody heard the question? I think so, okay. So in terms of the discussion around how far do we go, um, some of us, myself, you know, and I could speak for myself, I didn't necessarily want to shoot till the end because that's not my dad and it's not my family and it just, I, I'm questioning all the time, like, should I even be here? Am I influencing things? But, um, you know, Senior himself told us off camera that he wanted to film until he could no longer film anymore. And so Junior said, we're gonna follow this thing through to the end because that's what my dad would want. So it was kind of an interesting thing. There was always a sensitivity. And, and one thing actually just kind of adding on, and I hope it's not a tangent, but I'll just say briefly, there's a final moment where it's, junior and he's kind of interviewing his dad and he's trying to ask him questions that was a case where i went in just set up a camera got it in focus kind of checked the sound levels and then got out of there and we all the rest of us yeah, just was, left it, it felt like you they were the only ones in the room yeah so and 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 it and when robert came out of the room that day you know those of us that weren't in the room were thinking what's going on in there what are they getting? Right. I mean, what, this must be the deepest thing ever. Robert came out and he said, sorry, man, we got nothing. We got nothing. And that was because he had a whole list of questions he was going to ask and get all these meaningful answers. So it wasn't until Chris and I got into the edit and actually looked at what really you know, happened in that room or, or what and thought, oh, my God. Yeah, it's not what Robert thought it was supposed to be. And, and Robert, in his mind, didn't think that we, right. and it, we had anything. And it, I think it was hard for him because in that moment, it seems that Senior doesn't even connect that he's talking to his son. But at least he's saying how cool his son is. Yeah. But he's not connecting. And, and at the same time, we felt, well, in the spirit of these guys, we've got we've to at least kind of show that because whereas he wanted something specific out of that scene, probably as a son, he wanted some answers. 
you know, as filmmakers, we felt that actually said even much more that first yeah. for everything. Yeah, you don't get exactly what you think. You don't get a literal answer to those questions, yeah. but you get kind of a presence, a vibe, yeah. you know, so it can be unsatisfying, but it's what you and, the, and there is a line in there that you hear where he's, Robert says to him, we're in your face all day unless, unless you don't want us. And so that at any moment, you know, Senior could, could have just tapped his son and said, hey, and we would not have pursued that. Um, and, and I think it's worth noting that that day that you see that becomes kind of the final moment that they ever saw each other. Um, that morning, we were told that it, we were led to believe Senior probably had another year to live. Um, doctors were saying his stats looked pretty good. So none of us had a, a sense in, in that moment that this was it. And, and we felt like, I felt like maybe I would be back to do some fine tuning on the edit. How or much time was there between that day and his passing? Probably about six or seven weeks. Okay. I was yeah. just curious. I yeah. Like, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Just never know. Yeah. But I, but I will also say that, uh, in terms of the film within the film and Downey Sr. locking that cut, he did say to me, we got to hurry, kid, because my window's closing. Mm -hmm. So he had a sense. And maybe the rest of us didn't want to think about that and think, ah, he'll be fine. He's just being dramatic or something. Or, but, uh, and so Junior has said repeatedly, he said, I, I kind of knew when my dad finished his movie that, that he was finished. And... Uh, yeah. Another. So, hey, uh, first compliments. Uh, all the good things about this film, this is a really great yet tragic depiction of a man's uh, decline in, due to Parkinson's disease. Uh, even just the fact that this guy is a known bullshitter and you don't know whether he's fucking with you throughout the entire movie until the very last scene where you see him, you're not sure whether he's doing it with Junior, which I thought was great. At what point did you? And so, yeah, the question is, at what point did we know about the Parkinson's? And it, you see it in there where we're filming the ducks and he gets dizzy and he has to stop. And in reality, uh, once that camera goes down, S Senior almost collapses. And Chris and I are just frantically trying to figure out how to get him over to a bench and sitting down. And I had heard that he had Parkinson's, but you know, I've seen Michael J. Fox exist for many years with Parkinson's. So I kind of thought, okay, it's, it's a manageable thing and, and he's on some medication. I didn't really understand or know um, how progressive it could be. And so even right. when that happened, we were able to just kind of think, oh, that was just an isolated incident. Maybe, that, maybe he was just dizzy that day, it was hot or something. But it turned out that the disease was picking up. So when Senior himself asked, that, and he raises up his hand and is shaking. And he says, I think we need to, to film it. You can hear me off camera say, well, what is that? And he says, Parkinson's. So I, I'm not a medical guy, and so I didn't so quite understand. when you entered understand. into this, did you know he had been diagnosed? I didn't know. And I thought we were just getting into something about a, a cool, crazy filmmaker, and it was all about his movies. And, you know, I knew he had a cane or something, but... Uh, it wasn't until he really said, we need to film this, and I want you guys to show this. And I think, honestly, if I'm honest about it, I didn't really want to know. I, I have a little squeamish, and I'm not good with medical stuff. So I kind of just wanted to focus on the movies. Um, right. But his dad wanted to face it and, and put it in there. And, and uh, anyway, it, it definitely is something I'm grateful for because I was with him until the end, and I definitely could see through any disease. And I could just feel that artist that was timeless. Mm. You know, when you could just feel Senior when you were in the room like this close with him, he was ageless yeah. and creative. And he seemed pretty, you know, some people, you know, Muhammad Ali yeah. suffered that the last section of his life. But, you know, you sense there's still a person inside there that can't really get out. I felt he was pretty expressive. Definitely. He didn't ever feel trapped inside, non-expressive. I mean, or maybe he he is so expressive in his in his face and everything. So yeah, yeah. man, one like of the he was still a good communicator. Totally, know? and and uh, and he knew what he wanted. You know, the German song. Wow, <laughs> German what? Song. He, he 
He yeah. orchestrated that from yeah. afar, and he Jump needed up behind a tree. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> So it was so specific, funny. and he was so entertained. He wanted to watch it over and over. Obviously, he's, you know, so it might, it might be the greatest thing that Junior ever gave his dad was that yeah. performance in that scene. It brought him so much happiness. Well, I can't wait to see that within, you know, when we watch Senior Cut or whatever. Like Netflix better hurry. It would be a good double feature. <laughs> exactly. Um, Do you think that's going to happen, by the way? Is it I sure the rights hope. issues? Is someone working on it? You know, the, the nuts and bolts of it is that we'd have to re-clear all the different clips and all that jazz, uh, which, I mean, we had an incredible team that went that through. takes forever. The clearances, every clip, every old stock footage, all that stuff got cleared. And so the senior cut, uh, you know, we'd have to kind of go through and do the, you know, do that stuff. But uh, I sure hope people get to see it at some point because, and by the way, working on his cut, he leaned over it one day while we were editing, and he said, we're making the real movie. <laughs> and I didn't know what to think, because I, I, I was like, but you know I'm on the other one too, right? <laughs> like, I felt like I was you know, two-timing a little bit, but, but he, he was like kind of always nodding, and, and like we were in on something together. So, yeah, so I have a yeah. vested interest in that. But what a beautiful experience and, and a guy and... I'm just so grateful that I, I'm grateful to Robert for sharing his dad with us. Mm -hmm. That's the bottom line. I don't think my life will ever be the same. I was face to face with this artist and it, it, if anything, it just fired me up as an artist to go forward for that next yeah. half of my life wow. until the end. I hope that like yeah. senior, I just love it until the end. And I know you're doing a movie that's, going on for how many more years so you I know you're in for the long haul we can hope we can hope so any more questions anyone you're right here oh man it wasn't until last year uh because for so long, the edit, we thought we were making a, a kind of retrospective about a filmmaker. And really, when Senior passed, mm. what, whatever he and Junior might have intuited and known, the rest of us didn't really quite sense that it was a film about a, a person passing. And, I, and I, that may sound ridiculous, but I, we were so focused on him and his films and as a director and this tribute. When he passed, um, it caused us all to take a great pause and suddenly thinking back on it, everything had a different meaning. His desire to make his own film within a film suddenly didn't just seem like some rebellious action, but a real need. Mm -hmm. And so that became a framing device. Suddenly him wanting us to film his Parkinson's didn't seem random. It seemed like he knew, he knew all along what he was facing. And so the narrative started to really take shape once we could really process that when, when he was gone and think, oh my God, what did we actually get versus what did we think we were getting? And again, I, I'm always cautious because I don't want to speak for the whole team. I mean, yeah. just, but that was my take on it was that uh, once he was gone, yeah. uh, we all really took a beat and kind of thought, oh man, this is actually something. And I think Junior, I suspect, probably knew that more than we did. That that's just my take. Hmm. Yeah, and Chris is such a he's a master of relationships. What goes you know between people and I don't know, yeah. that seems to be such a focus of his work. So I could see him wanting to pull. The, was there? Did you guys have any conflicts in the editing? You know, like I mean, conflicts, whatever. <laughs> I don't Length think so. Or you know, like uh, what you know. What's interesting because there's th there's three editors, right? So right. Amanda. Griffin was the first editor, and she, and again, I'm, I, you know, you probably know because you, yeah. you do so much film, but you know, there's that first pass, yeah. and Amanda really laid everything out, and and you know, really got this thing down. I think after Senior passed, I, I thought I had a personal vested interest in this. I really wanted to to get in there, and I, kind of did a a life and death pass, if you will, and it was pretty freaking heavy, and. Um, 
And, and then Chris brought in a really good friend of his that was another editor in New York. And they kind of did, it was a baton, you know, so Amanda right. passed the yeah. baton to me and then I passed the baton to uh, Daniel, the other final editor. And he brought some levity into it. He saw some things. I think I was still dealing, I was pr suddenly processing the death. So my edit was a little heavier, right. Right. if you will. They came in, brought levity to it, did some trims. Um, and uh, one of the things that when I, you know, was just like, wow, this is coming together. When they found that piece of Greaser's Palace at the end. God. Yeah. You know, my movie version or whatever, edit, kind of ended on more of a, just the yeah. death and the sadness. And oh, no. those guys, and, and uh, you know, really brought in that right punctuation mark. And that was a case where right. I was like, oh, wow, that was... That was go team. That was a great job. Yeah, you need that. Yeah, and it, it needed it. What one person's documentaries are so crazy that way. That's why I don't like <laughs> making them my little experience because it's, you know, one thing is like, oh, that doesn't mean anything, and someone else is like, oh, that's what the whole thing's about. You know, yeah. a narrative. It's written, and you, you know, but you're just having to find it. Yeah. You know, so it's like, wow, it's it's so uh, difficult, intuitive. You know. Yeah. Mm. Mm. in the film and I wondered if you were maybe I'm pulling on a thread that isn't there but it seemed like you were chewing with um, in the way that Robert Downey Jr. wanted these answers at the beginning of the film from his father answers that he didn't really seem willing to give so easily maybe or you know just didn't have them even necessarily clarified for himself and then we have the third generation his youngest son or his son Yeah, well, the the therapist thing, I was like, I don't even know if this is allowed. <laughs> so yeah. I just kind of went for it, and Robert didn't kick me out, you know. So, and and he and he, you know, I'd been around him so much that I think he kind of thought, oh, it's just it's just Ford lurking around again. Um, but there was something to that, and and even the moment with Exton shocked us all. I, I couldn't believe what came out of the of the kid's mouth, I, I just was like, damn, like, it, all I know is that these downies have a very deep yeah. thing going on. Yeah, well, and it's a very, there's a lot of awareness there. He mm -hmm. really knows, and th that's what's interesting to see him, who's pretty precise in his thinking, trying to get answers of his dad, who's the opposite, who's not, who's just kind of not gonna give him yeah. what he wants, and I don't know if, do our parents ever, give us exactly what we're asking I, I don't know maybe yeah well my parents he are didn't. here we could ask them yeah <laughs> ask them well There's you still a few <laughs> questions i have <laughs> they kind of, yeah, i don't know but i could see robert and susan being very honest and open and specific with their kids you know just yeah their, yeah their kids growing up in a very different environment still very film <laughs> film Definitely. environment i'm sure their whole memory will be being on movie sets, very similar, but yeah, but very different. You know? It is cool. I mean, you know, when you're healthier, let's say when you're like working with Robert for many years, a lot of people say, "Hey, what's he really like?" You know, and yeah. I always just say, like, his mind is just like like these little fireworks going up, yeah. um, and uh, and and he definitely has passed that on to his children. They're they're very special in terms of like creativity and sparks and ideas and oh, so yeah. there is a generational oh. thing going on yeah. you know his ah oh, man it's not in the film yeah, it wasn't time i guess but uh his son made a film called i am exton and it was like a downey senior film i am what i am exton which is his name right okay and it was just this trippy ass collage of like <laughs> random imagery of him like <laughs> hopping around so you know it, it skips a generation or something. yeah i think so I, i'm i'm curious to see what becomes of exton yeah. well, oh man any, 
any more questions? I think we've kind of rattled right up here. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I come out of this realizing I haven't seen a lot of his later work. Mm. So Pound. Right. Are, there, are these available? Has Criterion done the... Criterion, up? well, yeah. Criterion has a, a box set called yeah. Up Late Night with Bob Downey, and I believe Pound is one of the ones on there, but... Um, and, and so it's, it's really worth checking out, and it's also on their app. But what's really cool was in the process of doing the doc we were able to kind of backtrack with the help of these incredible archival producers of ours and get direct scans of prints that haven't been scanned in modern times. So some of the, you know, the footage was like, even Putney Swope uh, on the like released version is letterboxed and it was never shot that way. It was always 4.3. So the released version was cropped and people's heads were cropped and stuff. It was a terrible, Thing. Who did that? Yeah, I mean, at some point, somebody yeah. was like, oh, let's make it letterboxed. And they uh, cropped the people's heads off. And so Senior was really pissed when we were cutting his version. He's like, well, wh where's the guy's head? And I said, I, hey, I didn't do it. This was who, whoever the distributor was. And he was like, oh, man. So I don't, unfortunately, I don't think he actually got to see the 4.3 the version. But anyway, so we we have been able to... Uh, track down prints and get things scanned and it's mm. it's cool so i'm hoping maybe after this thing i really want to see the one god I'm blanking the name malcolm mcdowell's in it the hugo pool hugo pool yeah now that's a case where i think you can go in you know to like available? apple or i yeah I, like iMovie or whatever it is in a apple store and, and kind of rented or something yeah, you'd be surprised um, films i've looked for for years you just look at amazon prime and there it is yeah you know it's like you think oh i think it's in a czech archive and then and then there it is on amazon prime yeah it's like holy shit yeah you know so you just never know <laughs> it's a yeah. pretty good era in that we're living in in that regard so yeah and i i, I don't know how this stuff Should works but cool. i think if enough people are watching it and checking it out yeah. my hope would be that maybe netflix snags some of the Downey Senior films and, and relicense them for their platform so that it would pop up as yeah. recommended viewing after that. Uh, I think, yeah, that's exciting. I, I, I just think it'll expose people to his films, you know, this, via his more famous son, obviously. But, yeah, yeah it's, it's kind of wonderful that it'll lead people, not only to those movies, but to, to such a fascinating time in American indie cinema yes. history, you know? Yes. Like he came up at the time, you know, to be around with Shirley Clark, John Cassavetes, late 50s, 60s. What a, what a, what a time. Exactly. The technology to, yeah. was suddenly portable where they could just pick up and you run. Could, and you could just feel the freedom they were yeah. enjoying. You know, it's, it's you got to draw a line somewhere, you yeah. know. And, and they had no permits, they were just running oh, and gunning. Yeah. 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 There was no, just, yeah, it was pretty, pretty rad. I that know. was pretty. And, and, even more magically, you do a film like, oh, we don't know, and then it's showing at the Cinematheque, and then it's yeah. getting reviewed in the Village Voice, and then people are showing up. I mean, isn't that amazing? You know, a reflection of the times, too. We went back to that Putney Swope Alley. It yeah. was now an alley owned by some very wealthy people, gated. Right, um, yeah. It New was, York has a way of doing that. Yeah, and, and it, they had kept the graffiti intact, but it was like, it, now boutique. Oh, and gosh. we snuck in because there was a delivery happening right. and senior was like, let's go in. And uh, yeah, that wasn't on camera, but that's how we ended up. We just kind of took it. We just went in and started shooting. And I think some of the people were like, well, what, what are these guys doing in here? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. And, uh, that's awesome. you know, we're like, hey, man, he, he shot his movie here, you know, you know 50 whatever yeah. years ago. <laughs> yeah. There should be little plaques on the wall. Like there should. Were, like, this is Putney Swope Alley. One of my dreams was that we could project the senior cut in that alley one night and have like a little private late night screening or something in the alley. Yeah. Or maybe yeah. in the pound, you know, where he shot that. <laughs> You always think there's so many, like New York City, has anyone ever made this movie? Because that city is is 
it's so well documented. Yeah. But like a then and now, you know, like the shot in Stranger Than Paradise where she's just walking down the street. Like if you could just shoot it the exact same way, the same lens, the same, just you could do that through like New York history. Mm hmm. You know, New York film history, because it's everything's I don't know. Let's do it, man. But I don't know. <laughs> it's just a weird idea. But shouldn't somebody make that film? <laughs> I want to look at it, you know, but that's a good example. Exactly. Seeing the, yeah. the guy laying there and then cutting to today. Oh, yeah. It's very moving. I love that stuff, just connecting to time yeah. and space. And I mean, I try to do that. I walk around New York, and if you know where certain films are shot, you know, like in Raging Bull, when he first meets Vicky at the pool, that pool's in the West Village. It's not out in the Bronx, it's right there. You can sit there and go, oh, they shot it like here. And if you if they panned a little more, they would see modern, but that's set up to be like the 50s or whatever. And but one of my but first, you know, he's kind of magical, the, the real locations. You know? One of my first jobs when I moved to New York City in 95 was as an usher at the Variety Arts Theater. The Variety. Had every bit of meaning to me because that yeah. was where Travis Bickle took his date. Right, Variety's a famous old, yeah. To see a film, and I was like, this is the theater from Taxi Driver. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, the other people that were working there was like, what? Do your job, man. I know, I know. We gotta, yeah. Yeah, we don't document ourselves. Our own medium doesn't document our, we're, we're such a transitory, you know, even though we're filming something to be permanent on film, the locations and everything, they're so temporal, you know? Yeah. They just, you use them and then you're gone, you know? Yeah. So even like if you're in a studio, I remember being at, on the Paramount lot and we were casting and I was in this building and you know, I was just like, God, we're in some crappy building. And then someone said, oh yeah, that's the building you're in. That's where in the Sunset Boulevard, that's Holden's office. I'm like, really? I'm in, really? It just made it feel so much better yeah. to, <laughs> from crappy office to like, hey, this is William Holden's office in Sunset Boulevard. You know, but I would appreciate it a plaque. On Ex the wall. Yeah. I want to know these things. Definitely. <laughs> Anyway. I'm going to see if I can at least go back on my next trip and just sneak a plaque yeah. in that at Putney Swope Alley. That could be my own little subversive. Yeah. You have can to put like plaque reach stuff. All gate. you need is permission of the owners. Yeah. Maybe they would find that a good thing to have a Putney Swope. Great Jones <laughs> Alley could become Putney Swope Alley. It's like, what is Putney Swope, by the way? Yeah. So, um, anyway. Any, a few more questions? I think we're sort of wrapping up. Anything? Oh, yeah. On, uh, repeat the question. Does it change your perspective on filmmaking? Well, you I feel like you've answered that. Yeah, but the, the short answer is, answer is yes. Mm -hmm. And it just, it was about the commitment to the craft till the bitter end, for better yeah. or for worse. He was married to cinema. And uh, so that that has changed me and it's, reaffirmed my own commitment. It's like a renewal of the vows. So yeah, like that was, that's definitely something that has changed me. It's a, a little cautionary too though. I, I see this and you know, it's the, the danger like what Robert, there's little, there's lines that strike like thunderbolts in the movie that are just kind of offhand when he says, the only, what he said he was 15 when he won that or mm -hmm. got placed in that talent thing. He said it was the only time his dad had paid attention to outside of his own films. And right. Stuff. You know, we have a way, filmmakers have a way of just being so about what you're working on yourself. You know, it's a real challenge to now you also gotta be go, there for and you also gotta go look at the, the world around you. Yeah. Get out. And exactly. so that was I yeah. guess later senior also yeah, no, he's take a, some time he's a different look at the guy. ducks. No, that was young on fire yeah. guy. Yeah, that's so I found that moving, but you know, if you have a kid, they're Yeah, absolutely. That kid doesn't have a choice. They, yeah. You know, so Yeah, and 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 that goes without saying that he I got that that he evolved and you know, like Susan asks, has he come to terms with his impact on his son? We don't know, but now we know he just loves his kid. And so yeah. I think even senior, obviously. But he kind of fesses up to have smoked pot with it, to yeah. let his kid, you know, there was that in-between generation that those, that generation, like, well, you know, our, our parents were so 
stuffy. I'm gonna, we're going to be the cool parents and do that. It's like, no, no, the next generation is, okay, that's too much. Let's yeah. go back to being, you know, but, you know, there's a generation there. Yeah. My generation. That yeah. <laughs> or people, yeah, it's like, depending on your hippie parents, yeah, you could have seen a lot of things way too early, not mm. to be all moralistic or anything, but, you know, come on. Yeah. <laughs> But he kind of he kind of seems to fess up to that. Um, so I was curious um, if you had hope at any point in your childhood, memory, like, do you ever wonder if something like that would have happened to you? Like, like if, if anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> like what? Oh, via my own kids yeah. or something? Yeah. Wow, I would dread the day my <laughs> oldest, you know. <laughs> I actually documented my oldest daughter. I, I filmed her very religiously and I interviewed her very regularly because mm -hmm. I thought she, in her future, would have this big project that she was very well documented at all ages. I went a little overboard. And uh, she just eventually hated it. She's like, no more interviews, you know, no. But there is this kind of treasure trove. I always thought maybe she'll go back to it someday. But that's really, that was for her. I don't know where I am in that, you know. Because I thought, well, it's just so easy now. There's very little documentation of, of me, you know, as a kid. So I thought, well, but anyway. I had kids later, and I, I didn't do that again. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> so you don't know where to, to bring in your own. Yeah, I don't know. It's a parenting decision. But So we met. Um, I had the opportunity to travel around and follow Rick and his production of Fast Food Nation. And uh, had incredible footage. And But it was a rare thing of like someone was like, hey, you know, we need you to film. Would you like to film some behind the scenes footage of Richard Linklater? I mean, I was like, what? Yeah. And I, I, don't, I don't think you knew that. But, uh, I mean, for me, that was just an incredible thing to witness you and the actors and everybody having these creative moments. So, anyway, there's some stock footage of at least that one period, if there's yeah, ever. Yeah, because I like, you were a filmmaker doing it. Most of the behind the scenes is kind of EPK promotional crap, you know, just trying to sell the movie, where you kind of made your own film. Yeah. You know, it was like a behind the scenes interpretation of what we were trying to do, which I appreciated, you know, I was a filmmaker just doing whatever they wanted, so. You literally told me after that, you said, you're a filmmaker, dude, you need to be making your own films, not filming. Yeah, don't, I mean, don't film other people making films. So that was very inspirational. Okay, good, well. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> That's good. So, oh, back there. No. Ask about Netflix. Yeah, the Netflix. That's more recent, right? Very recent. We premiered the film at Telluride Film Festival, and that was our first time showing it to the public or distributors. Um, Netflix had seen a sample, kind of a sizzle reel, yeah. not a trailer, but a you know a sample of the film about a year before that, and said, "Hey, this looks really cool." They had a relationship with Chris Smith um, from some of his other projects, like Jim and Andy. So they said, they said, come back to us when this is done, because we really like it. Um, but it, you know, we showed it at Telluride, and it was just kind of to see where it would fall, and it, that's where it ended up. It was Netflix. And they've been incredible, like helping us to just get the word out and spread it and do what yeah, they do. Yeah, I think you're, yeah. I mean, for documentaries, it's so hard to just find that audience. So, By the way, not just, not just our documentary, Netflix is, you know, this year alone, putting out some incredible documentaries that through this process, I've had the chance to Margaret see. Margaret Brown's film. Mm -hmm. Descendant. Um, they have one that's dropping soon called In Her Hands um, that's set in Afghanistan. So I've really, you know, the times have changed. And, and I, I just have been thinking about 
that there is a platform right mm -hmm. now that's putting out some ballsy stuff. It's not just kind of fluff. You know, they're putting out some things with real heart and taking some chances. And so, yeah, to get to meet some of the other filmmakers whose whose work is going out and just seeing how, you know, they're they're, you know, helping us to at least show it in some cinemas and and mm -hmm. just get it out and to be able to even show it to live audiences after the, being in the pandemic for so long, is such a gift and a blessing. That's really great. Yeah. And I guess during award season too, that gives a little extra juice. Yeah, sure. whatever. End of year gets people excited. So you're yeah. in a good season. Yeah, we're in a good season. Out. And yeah. it's a family film, so it's yeah. this time of year. That's maybe that's why it was hitting me so hard tonight. Um, having my family yeah, here and it's very, yeah. looking at it's Robert's funny. family and Yeah. Yeah. I actually talked to Robert today and he was happy that we were doing this and mm -hmm. I said, This was supposed to just be about you and your family. Why am I now you know, thinking it's about me and mine, and he just laughed. He said, "That's that's art, man." Yeah, you know, it's, it's about all your family. It's about everybody now. Yeah, it sure is. So, okay, guys. Well, thank you so much for being here, all of you, and especially you, Kevin. Thanks for sharing this film with us, and congratulations again. Thank your you. Your years of toil on this have really have really paid off. It's a special document. You know. Thank you. And, and again, thank you to AFS for existing. Yes. And please continue to support them. Yeah. All those films we're showing, come to, come to all of them, please. Yeah. We show great stuff. Here. Yeah, I mean, so, this yeah. is a beautiful space. And it sure to, is. Yeah, it's awesome. So anyway, thank you. Okay, good night, guys. <laughs>